Okay, here we go, here we go.
Jim Brown. <laughs> oh, it's a nice way to greet 2022 with the beautiful blues by Peter Green, the great Peter Green, still with us. And uh, what can I say? Was uh, certainly one of the most influential guitarists on me, <laughs> for sure, but on many guitarists for all time. One of the greats. And that was Albatross, but uh, I don't mean to put an accent. 2022, I'm really looking forward to it. I think it was a tongue-in-cheek title myself, as in Monty Python. Albatross! I mean, like a fresh Albatross. But, uh, well, here we are, uh, January 1st, 2022. It's one of those magic numbers, right? One, one, two, two. Uh, <laughs> reading crosswise. And uh, it all adds up to uh, hopefully a better year for everybody. Uh, for me, particularly 2021 was not so bad insofar as I was kind of confined to quarters uh, against my will for a lot of it, basically due to the fact that when I was planning to travel, I discovered that my passport, uh, shock horror, only had two months left on it. And at that point, they weren't allowing you to go to Europe unless you had at least two months and more left on a passport. So I took my chances and submitted it through the system with the expedited fee request. I saw all sorts of, there were websites about this of people just really uh, trying to frantically get someone to stamp their passport and approve a new passport. People were paying a lot of money for this, apparently. <laughs> I don't know if it was out of bribery or they traveled long distances or, you know, whatever, by hook or by crook. They were, I just sat it out and lo and behold, almost five weeks after the submission at the end of July, I got my new passport in the mail. And then about a month later, they sent me the old passport for you know, the archive or whatever to stare at all the, the stamps in there. I've had many times extra pages put in because of all the touring I've done here and there. So anyway, uh, but I wasn't really able to get touring happening again until November. That was the first thing I did when I got my new passport. Okay, I'm safe to, to play overseas, theoretically, you know. But uh, so I did manage to travel and perform in Italy, Holland, and France, uh, and had a great time doing it, albeit you know, I was tested about six times at least coming and going once they this was really peculiar uh, i submitted my passport at the customs going in to to paris from holland where i was for a few days along with my triple vaccination proof card and they didn't give me the card back uh, i don't know why they would choose to keep such a thing maybe it was just a human error but anyway i got it back but it was heavy uh, anyway, I would say to anybody who has these documents, which are so crucial, as far as moving about as best you can, and especially if you're an itinerant musician like myself, best to back them up with a photograph on your iPhone, so you have documentation in case you know sh you, you conceivably lose this or or something dire happens, uh, because that would be sufficient evidence probably <laughs> to get over one border or another but but anyway so that was really good once i got back into the touring mode uh some wonderful memories of some shows and i live for playing live i always have uh and then uh recently you know, carolyn and i just came back from a lovely trip to the uk where i was so honored to play for the acting u.s ambassador philip reeker who is an old friend, uh, and it's a, an interesting story how I even came uh, to his attention, but I was going to play, I think about seven years ago, in Mexico City, to play a concert with Peter Hamill of Van de Graaff Generator to help promote our Other World album. And I happened to be in England, and Carl and I were doing his and hers computer logins, <laughs> 
working away side by side in the Swiss Cottage Hotel, our favorite hotel in London. And uh, I got a request from a guy working at the, the U.S. Embassy Library at the Bibliotheque of Benjamin Franklin, and he said, we see that you're coming here, we're, we're fans, would you do a charity concert for disadvantaged children? So uh, I was so inclined that I had to ask the question, is there an honorarium associated with it? Is, this is what I do for a living. He said, no, uh, but we just had Patty Smith here. So that was good enough for me, and I said, okay, sign me up. Anyway, went down there uh, early the day before Hamill arrived and did this concert and felt great about it. They bust kids in from all over Mexico to, to hear me play and, and you know, it was a great feeling, I tell you, one of the best concerts I gave. And I liked it so much, I came back a few times, maybe five or six times, at least, whenever I was traveling to Mexico to play, I made a point of doing a charity concert at the U.S. library. And eventually, the lady who ran this program, Claudia Mendiola, so Gary, we're so happy to host you and have you here to play these. And I think it might appeal to other foreign uh, diplomats uh, in, in our State Department. And, you know, where are you going next? So I said, well, there are some shows coming up in Italy. Thanks to Luca Zanotti, my main guy, for many years. So uh, they put out a, a, a notice that went out that said I was available. And lo and behold, I got a message back from a guy working for the U.S. Consul General in Milan, who was then Philip Rieker, saying we'd love to host a concert here, which they did. And that's how I met him, actually. And I, I happened to be also doing a tribute to Jeff Buckley in a theater in Milan the following night uh, with Alessio Franchini. And anyway, it was a lovely uh, experience. So he and I became Facebook friends, and he stayed in touch, so I want to say that was a really fantastic night, and thanks to everybody who made it so successful. Uh, there's a long string of people I can thank, and those of you who managed to show up over there in London, I commend you, but I get it if you didn't, because just as I got there, the COVID, the Omicron fear was spreading very rapidly as the level started spiking. And, and they're still spiking, and I, you know, the good news is hopefully it's not as severe, but whether that means it's the end of the pandemic or there's yet a more virulent strain on the horizon, nobody knows. And I prefer to, uh, you know, not worry about this stuff and make the best and try and to urge everybody else to stay calm and happy against all odds, I know. Because it's a drag, especially for me, because my late mother, Adele, was a victim of the COVID virus. That's what's listed on the official death certificate. And she passed away in April of 2021. Was it? No, 2020. In the first year. She, her and the... Uh, 16 other people in a nursing home in Riverside got infected and rapidly declined. I'm really sad about that. So I got a personal connection. I'm sure everybody else does too, that you probably know somebody or related to somebody, you know, who've, who, who've had a terrible time with this, so it's no joke. But uh, anyway, all I can tell you is I tried to just stay positive and I think that's always the best attitude and course to take in the face of immense hardship and okay no, only to segue into it here's a book i just picked up by ulrich alexander boschwitz called the passenger no relation to the antonioni film of the same name uh, but this is an account an actual novelization of a diary that was kept by boschwitz in Germany shortly after the advent of Kristallnacht, Crystal Night, which was more or less open season declared on Jewish people in the Reich and also in Austria. And uh, it got its name because shop windows were smashed, people were harassed and beaten up. There may have been some murders too. Businesses were burned to the ground. And then from then on, it was a short step to wearing 
a yellow star, and then interning in concentration camps, and one horrible thing after another. So this captures, apparently, vividly, the mood uh, from an eyewitness on the ground, a Jewish person, who managed to live through it and then get this account published. So, you know, I don't like to dwell on these things either, but I think it's important to inform oneself, because uh, you never know, or you really don't know, especially with the way politics are, are up for grabs, certainly in this country and, and, and in a lot of places. Uh, who knows what's next? All I can say is keep your lamps trimmed and burning, folks, to quote the great old blues song by Blind Willie Johnson. It's a great gospel number. Just stay awake, <laughs> as my late friend Hal Wilner uh, titled an album of Walt Disney music. And Hal was an early victim of COVID. Uh, stay awake and be vigilant and, and uh, yeah, just go forward positively, you know, I think that's the most important thing. So what can I say? I love playing for you today and jamming on that tune. And uh, I'll be back on Tuesday, every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, as long as I'm in town. Uh, I'll be doing my best to play for you at 3 o'clock. I was an hour late the other day. How did that happen? but it uh, happens from time to time. But generally speaking, I stick to the schedule, and uh, please check it out. Last but not least, I got some really good end of the year news concerning this old thing. My album, The Essential, Gary Lucas on Knitting Factory Records, a double CD uh, cavalcade of some of the best moments of my career. Uh, going back to 1980, playing with Captain Beefheart, the earliest track on there is us. It's actually me doing a guitar solo piece of Van Vliet's live at the Beacon Theater here in New York in November 1980. And uh, it has a lot of what I would cherry pick as my best work, but then again, you know, there's so much of his 35 albums at plus worth, and another three or four are due to come out next this year. So it's hard to like to pick favorites, but in any case, I think you'll enjoy it. But uh, the news today, just recently, about an hour ago, was that a guy who does uh, a regular shift on Friday nights on WPKM out in Bridgeport, Connecticut, the, out in the world, one of the best radio stations in the world, along with WFMU, WKCR, and some other ones in the general vicinity here, uh, chose this as the top of his top 10 list for 2021, so I'm so honored and thank you for that. I'd love to come up there and play live on the air for somebody. Howard Thompson, you listen. Uh, and that was the third accolade, the others being a, a Spanish magazine called Revola, I think it is. Also selected it as one of the best of the years. Thank you very much. And uh, a couple of articles I wrote for pleasekillme.com were singled out as among their best of the year. I've posted all this online on Facebook, so check them out. And uh, I hope to see you all back here this Tuesday. Thanks again for tuning in. I got a plethora of movies to catch up on and stuff to read, and Carolyn and I are about to look at The Lost Daughter this Maggie Gyllenhaal version of a great novel by Elena Ferrante. So I'll talk about that hopefully next time, and, and I'll see you then soon. All right, take care. Love to you guys.